Whenever you use another person's ideas, you'll need to cite and reference them as the source. To do this in a way that's complete and consistent, students are generally asked to use one of the major academic citation styles. Although there are hundreds, if not thousands, of different citation styles, most people will only ever use the major ones. These include APA, MLA, Chicago, CSE, and perhaps a few others. While each is slightly different, the main purpose is always the same, to share the source of your ideas when they come from another person. So what does this look like in the real world? One very important thing to note is that proper citing involves two elements, an in-text citation and a reference. We'll take a quick look at each of these elements here so that regardless of what specific style you're asked to use, you'll have a good idea of what you need to be doing. First, you'll place an in-text citation within the text of your paper to show that an idea came from an external source. Depending on what style you use, this may be the author's name and year and perhaps a page number in parentheses, or it may be a numbered footnote or endnote. In any case, the in-text citation goes right next to the idea you're using and is meant to identify the source without interrupting the flow of your writing. Here's an example in APA style. I include the author's name and the year, showing my reader that this idea came from that source. The full information about the source will be included in the second element, the references. Here you will include all the relevant information about the source, including the author and year again, but also the title or chapter title, the journal name, if applicable, the publisher, volume and issue numbers, page numbers, and more. This is meant to guide your reader to the original source. Here's the same source as it would be listed in an APA bibliography. My reader can use this information to find a copy of the source for their own analysis or interpretation. An important thing to note is that different types of sources require different types of information in the reference. A book is slightly different from a book chapter or an article or a video. You can get complete examples of how to cite different types of sources in the style guide or by consulting a summary online. We'll link to some good summaries in the resources section of this tutorial. Both elements of the citation are necessary. If I didn't provide the in-text citation, my reader wouldn't know which ideas were mine and which came from my sources. If I didn't have the references, the reader probably wouldn't know enough about the sources to find them. So make sure that you're including both elements according to the citation style you're using. Hopefully this tutorial has helped you to understand how you're expected to use other people's ideas in your academic work. If you're struggling to understand how to cite and reference one of your sources, or unsure of any aspect of what we've covered in this tutorial, you may want to talk to your professor, or come ask us in the library. These styles take a while to learn and even longer to master, so it's normal to have questions. The most important thing to remember is to always give credit to the sources you use. This will help you to honor the work of others, to give your own work a polished and academic quality, and help you to avoid plagiarism and do honest work.